Hello everybody. Welcome to another St Peter's video. My name is Andrew and I have the privilege of being vicar of St Peter's here in Ruddington. I do pray that you're well. And today you join me in my car on this beautiful day because according to government guidance for the first time since lockdown began I can actually go out for a drive. But just as I was about to go out it occurred to me that before things start going back to even a semblance of normal that I should think about what I'd learnt during lockdown and should encourage you to do the same. Yeah, it, it has been horrible and scary and frustrating. But also this time of enforced change has given us a unique opportunity to reflect upon the way that we live our lives, hasn't it? So as things gradually open up, what parts of your old life do you want to keep? And what do you want to change? What new perspective have you gained about what is important and what really isn't? And for me, what I've learned is neatly summed up in today's Bible reading. It's spooky how that often happens, isn't it? It's as if God really speaks to us. Our reading today is from John. John chapter 14, verses 15 to 21, which is the passage immediately following last week's reading. And it goes like this. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me any more, but you will see me, because I live you also will live. On that day you will realise that I am in the Father, and that you are in me, and that I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The disciples have just had their lives turned upside down. The familiar, comfortable worldview that they held so tightly of their rise to power and riches at the Messiah's side, here and now, has been upended, trashed, as Jesus explains once again that he will die and they will fail before he rises again. Now, as we discovered last week, such is the amazing compassion of Jesus that immediately after he challenges them with the truth, he also begins to comfort them. He commands them not to despair. Apparently it is a choice. Do not let your hearts be troubled, verse 1. And then he places the horror of what is about to happen, and it will happen, into its eternal context. He then underlines the authority by which he can say this, that he can bring this hope, for he is God in flesh and blood, before finally reassuring them that they will never lose their intimacy with him, their ability to speak to him one to one, which is what they've most valued. Now, that's all well and good, but now in our reading today, we get to the business end of Jesus' reassurance, what he physically and practically will do for them once he is gone. Today we hear about the gift of God the Holy Spirit, verses 15 to 16. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will give you, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. Note that Jesus is not saying, if you work hard, I will give you the Holy Spirit as a reward. No, what he says is that it is as you seek to put into practice what you see me doing, and now what I've asked you to do, obeying my commands, as you dedicate your life to loving in my name, you're going to need some help, and not just any help. You're going to need me, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. And this gift, the gift of the very presence of God with us, shouldn't surprise us at all, because this has always been the distinctive feature of the people of God from the very beginning. The people of Israel had the very presence of God, the living God, with them in the tabernacle. And then in the temple, that's what made them the people of God. But now, we, in the fulfilment of all the promises of the Old Testament, we now have the same God living with us, in us, both as individuals and as a community, 
through the gift of God the Holy Spirit. But why? Why? Why is God with us? To make us feel better? To give us magical powers? To fill our churches? To make our services lively? To give us wealth and ease and power? Well, no. For one reason. To empower us to love. Verse 15. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. And verse 21, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This, I'm convinced, is why so often we get so screwed up about the Holy Spirit. It's because we think he's here to give us superpowers, to fizz our emotions, when he simply wants to empower us to love better, to love God, ourselves and our neighbours better and to empower us to reveal his love to those around us. And I suppose that, in a nutshell, that's what I've discovered during lockdown. That's what I've learned. You see, prevent from simply filling my life with normal, busy routines, I've had the luxury of asking myself, am I really living as a Christian, really? And more specifically, am I really loving others and not just using them to get what I want, to get my basic needs met? And it was as I really thought and prayed about this and wanted to follow it through, and seemingly this is really important, I felt prompted to call the hospital and to ask if they needed some help in the chaplaincy. And they did. And that's been hard, but it's been good work and really enriching. And it was as I thought and prayed about what it means to love, the family members that I've not spoken to for years asked if I'd like to meet them each week virtually online. And it's been really precious. And it was as I thought and wrestled with God in prayer and Bible study about what the reality of my Christian walk was like, that the daily exercise with my family has become the highlight of my day. Do you see the pattern? It is as we seek to love that God the Holy Spirit steps in to guide, to empower, to provide new and challenging opportunities so that we, yes, us, broken and still work in progress, us, might do his will and reveal his love. And it is in the midst of this flow, this life of worship and sacrifice and service, that we discover the reality of God, the God who said that he would never leave us as orphans. It is here that we experience more the practical reality of the depth of his love, which is indeed the most important thing. Let me tell you a little story. There is an ancient legend that speaks of God's struggle to guide the destiny of humanity. It is said that God had grown tired of the way that mortals constantly lose their way, creating disasters as they go. So he sent out his angelic messengers to gather together the timeless wisdom contained contained in the world and to place his wisdom in a multitude of books that would be housed in a great library, a library that mortals could use in order to work out how they should live and act in the world. When after um, uh, many millennia, the great task was completed, the colossal library stood proudly in one of the world's great cultural capitals, dominating the skyline. However, this huge building contained too many books for any individual to read. It all was all but impossible to reach for the majority of people, and the library's sheer scale and size was enough to put anyone off even attempting to enter it. So God demanded that his courtiers compress the essential wisdom into a single encyclopedic book. Once completed, this single work was widely circulated, but the manuscript was so huge that one could hardly lift it, let alone read it, or put what it said into practice. So yet again, God put his courtiers to work, crafting a booklet with all the essential information. But the people were lazy, and there were many who could not read. So the booklet was refined into a single word that was that and that word was sent out on the lips and life of a messenger and the word it was love the messenger jesus our task now empowered by the very presence of god to repeat the message in our lives and upon our lips really above everything else and to reveal what God's love really looks like to those around us. 
So are you up for this? Amen. Let's pray, everyone. Father God, we pray that all those, we pray for all those who do not have enough love, for people who are separated from those who love them or never really had loving people around them. We also pray for those who feel that they're not loved because they do not receive a fair share of the world's food, clothing, work, shelter or freedom, or because they suffer in war. Then, O Lord, we pray for ourselves. We pray that we, through the empowering presence of your Holy Spirit, may be a source of love to those near us and the world beyond us. Give us special compassion for those who are different to us and those who find it hard to ask for the care and support they need. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me end this video with a blessing. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. So be gentle, everyone. Be gentle on yourselves and on others. More videos to come. And now it's time to go out for a drive. Thank you, everyone.